Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about some romance books where one of the people in the couple is hiding their identity for whatever reason. So I actually don't really love this trope. Whenever I hear a recommendation from somebody and they say it's a hidden identity trope, I kind of look the other way immediately. <laughs> I don't know why it's just not like a favorite of mine. I see it as lying sometimes and lying is a big no-no for me But for whatever reason, I really liked these books that have the hidden identity trope in them So let's get started. We're gonna first talk about the contemporary romances First I have Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas. This is also a bully romance and kind of set in high school too, by the way. When Misha and Ryan were children, they were in two different elementary schools and these two schools had kind of put together a pen pal thing with these classes. And so Ryan and Misha were paired together as pen pals. And they've been writing to each other for years and they call each other friends, like, but they've only written each other letters all these years and they don't know what the other person looks like or who they really are in person. But then for whatever reason, Misha stops replying to Ryan's letters and she's very upset by this. Little does Ryan know though that Misha's going through a lot of stuff at home. It's weighing on him, it is. And so Misha ends up transferring to a new high school and it just happens to be the high school that Ryan goes to. And he figures out who she actually is and is really upset when he realizes that Ryan is basically the complete opposite person than who she portrayed in the letters that she's been writing to him all these years. And so Misha kind of makes it a goal to bully her, kind of knock her down a couple pegs for lying to him. And so the hidden identity aspect in here is with Misha. Ryan does not know that this guy at school, this new guy at school is the man or the boy she's been pen palling with for all these years. Next, I have a spoiler alert by Olivia Dade. Marcus is one of the actors on this very popular uh, fantasy show, very Game of Thrones-esque and April is one of the many fans of said show. She even writes fan fiction for it and she has many online friends. One of those friends is actually Marcus, but she doesn't know that it's like the real celebrity Marcus. She just knows him as her friend Marcus, you know? And so one day April decides to post some cosplay of her cosplaying as one of these characters online and she gets kind of like a lot of backlash and hate for it because she is a plus size woman and Marcus immediately sees this picture and thinks she is beautiful and wants to basically hype her up. He asks her out on a date very publicly and they both don't know that the other person is their friend online. Like they both write fan fiction for this show. But then Marcus is the one to figure it all out first and he keeps his identity a secret from April for a very long time. So there's definitely a reason as to why Marcus is keeping his identity secret. Is it a good reason? Not necessarily, but I really enjoyed this book and I thought it was very entertaining, even though I did not necessarily enjoy the hidden identity aspect of it. Then I have a novella. We have a novel seduction by Claire Hastings. So our two characters in here were actually, um, knew each other in college and our heroine was a tutor and the hero in this book was one of the guys that she tutored. And way back in college, she kind of had like a secret admirer who found out that she reads kind of like steamy books and he would highlight kind of like the scenes that he wanted to do with her and send her the book all highlighted with the, the stuff highlighted. And she never knew who this guy was sending her all these books. Like she never knew who this guy was. And she never she never figured it out that it was actually one of the guys she tutored. Um, it's years later, she has not received any of those books in a while, but then she bumps into the guy that she tutored all those years ago in a bookstore. And then he finally like reveals what he did in college. And she's like, oh my gosh, that was you. And so then the two of them can like spice things up together. and. This was really cute. If you want a sweet but hot novella, this is definitely one you should pick up. And yeah, he hides his identity only really in college. It's kind of like a backstory aspect to the book, not a present day aspect to the book. Next, I have Call Me Maybe by Cara Bastone. This one is just so good. You need to listen to it on Audible. Like the audiobook is fantastic. It has like background noise, sound effects. Like it is such an amazing audiobook. Vera in here is trying to get in contact with this customer service for this website. She's putting together a website, I think for her job, but she needs it done by a specific day in like 24 hours or something. And so she's been on customer service for a long time on this phone call. And Cal just so happens to be one of the people working on the service desk trying to help her out fixing up her website and the two of them end up being on the phone for hours while they're trying to fix this, but also getting to know each other and end up actually falling for each other 
on the phone. Cal is the one who has like a secret identity. I'm not going to spoil it because that's kind of a little bit of a surprise in here, but I didn't like dislike it. I didn't think it was lying at all. I loved the hidden identity aspect in here. I just thought it added to the layers of this book. Then I have Hide Your Heart by Tracy Alvarez. I talked about this book recently in a single parent romance. Our heroine here is a single mother and she ended up taking her child with her to move to New Zealand to escape a very abusive husband. So she ends up moving to New Zealand, changing her identity, changing everything about her life to make sure that her husband never finds her. Um, she was previously a model, a celebrity, and so she's changed everything to make sure she is off the radar and nobody could find her. But then her next door neighbor just happens to be a very prolific, I think famous, photojournalist. And so she's like, dang, if this dude finds out who I am, I'm screwed. And then to make matters worse, the hero of this book is trying to flip the house next to her, like flip it and make it kind of like a summer vacation house for celebrities. So she's like, this is not going to work out well. And so she does not like him at first because of everything that he's doing. And she's just trying to keep her identity safe, but then they get to know each other and obviously grows into something more, but she's definitely keeping her identity a secret because she does not want her husband to find her. Like she is terrified. Then I have Darling Beast by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is a historical romance that I just loved. So her in here is a very famous actress in the ton in society. Um, and she and her son are living in kind of like the abandonment rubble almost of this theater that burned down, I believe in one of the previous books in the series. So they're living in the only remains, like the only things that remain from this fire um, in this theater. And around the theater, there are these beautiful gardens that are being fixed up so that they can look beautiful again whenever the theater gets rebuilt and reopened. Um, and so the hero just so happens to be one of the men that is working in the garden to fix it up. But the heroine doesn't know this. She doesn't know that anyone's fixing up this garden. And so she finds this giant man with a shovel covered in mud like in the area surrounding her home and she's like freaked out and scared she finally realizes who he is and what he's doing there and she's fine with it obviously but the hero in here apollo is actually keeping his real identity a secret because he escaped from jail um and he was falsely accused of something and so he's kind of keeping his identity a secret from others um, including the heroine until a certain point because he doesn't want to go back to jail for something that he did not do. But I absolutely love this one. The single parent aspect in here was amazing. And just like the way the hero fell in love with her son. Oh, it was so, so beautiful. I have two books, a part of the Hathaway series by Lisa Kleypas. Um, first one is Married by Morning. This is, what's her name? Um, Catherine. This is Catherine and Leo's story. So Catherine is the governess to two of the Hathaway sisters and Leo is like the eldest brother in the Hathaway family and so for the past couple books they've kind of been like doing this amazing banter between the two of them. Leo loves to pick on Catherine, tease her about her glasses and everything and um they're just bantering back and forth. It's like it looks like they're enemies but they're actually like, slowly like pining for each other. But this is about them like falling in love but Catherine is keeping her identity a secret and you figure out in the story why, that's a big spoiler, I'm not gonna tell you, but her identity does come to the surface at some point in this book and there are repercussions from it. Excuse me if you can hear the weed eater outside. Apparently my dad thought it would be a perfect time to bring the weed eater out, so. <laughs> the other book in the Hathaway series with a hidden identity trope is Love in the Afternoon, which is the last book in the series. So this is the romance between Beatrix and Christopher. You've met Beatrix in the previous books in the series. I think she's the youngest Hathaway sibling. Beatrix has this friend named Prudence. And her, so Prudence and this man named Christopher have been corresponding, sending letters back and forth to each other. Christopher is off at war. And Prudence is kind of like sick of writing these letters to Christopher. She's like, I don't like him. I'm bored. And Beatrice is like, well, he's in the war. He probably needs something to like keep his spirits up and for something to distract him. So I'll just write the letters for Prudence. And so she does. And then they keep writing letters to each other and they fall in love with each other over letters. However, Christopher does not know that this isn't Prudence writing to him. Like this is Beatrix. Christopher friendly comes back from war. He makes it his goal to find the woman who has been sending him these letters. He thinks it's Prudence at first and then quickly realizes that it is not that woman. Um, and so he's trying to find out who actually wrote those letters to him. And so Beatrix has decided not to really tell him because she's in love with him, but she knows that he doesn't like her. Like he said before that he does not care for Beatrix. She's very 
conflicted as to whether, whether to tell him who she really is because she thinks that he would reject her. Um, so there's a reasoning why she's hiding her identity, but yeah, this book is so good. I love it. It's one of my favorite historicals. Okay, so I have two fantasy romances for you. First is A Fate of Wrath and Flame by K.A. Tucker. And the hidden identity aspect in this book is so interesting and it needed to happen in this book. So Romaria in here is our heroine. She actually lives in our world, in our time. And she's a jewel thief or a thief of some sort. She ends up getting roped into this woman's life. And she doesn't know that this woman may or may not have magical powers and ends up transporting her to a fantasy realm. And she actually gets put into the body of someone who looks exactly like her, basically like her doppelganger. She gets put into her doppelganger body, into a Romeria, into this fantasy land. Like there's a Romeria living in this fantasy land. She's actually very evil. Her doppelganger Romeria in this fantasy land was actually betrothed to King Xander. But you read at the beginning of this book that like apparently Romeria betrayed him somehow and he is so pissed at her, but he doesn't know that that Romeria is not the Romeria that betrayed him. He's still looking at the body of the Romeria he was supposed to marry. Um, but he doesn't know that her body's been inhabited by a different Romeria from a different place and time. She's definitely keeping her identity a secret because she doesn't know how to tell people that. Like, no one would believe you. I don't feel like anyone would believe you if you said something like that. So, um, I really enjoyed this. I'm about to read book two. And yeah, the story is just so, so entertaining. If you love fantasy romances, please pick this one up. And the last one that I want to mention is The Winter King by C.L. Wilson. This hidden identity trope is just so it's so good in this book. I feel like fantasy romances do, do this so stinking well. Winter is our hero, hero in here. He's a king with a lot of power in a large kingdom. And so he comes to the summer court and goes to the king of Summerly. It's like, hey, I'm gonna take over your land unless you give me one of your very famous, beautiful daughters to marry. And this summer king is like, oh crap, I love my daughters. I don't wanna do that to them. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna trick him and have him marry the daughter I don't like that nobody knows about. So Kasmin is said daughter, his youngest that no one knows about. I believe it's because like her mother died in childbirth giving birth to her, I'm pretty sure. I think that's why he hates her so much, which is messed up. Um, but she's been basically locked up in his tower for years. No one knows she's, she exists besides the people who live in her home. And so on the wedding day, Winter thinks he's marrying one of the beautiful daughters of Summerlee, but underneath all of the veils and all the gossamer and all the lace and everything, it is Kasmin. He doesn't realize who Kasmin really is until they've already consummated their vows and everything, until they're on their way out of the king like the summer league kingdom and he is pissed and she, and, and Kasman's basically like i had no other choice my father threatened me i i couldn't do anything i couldn't tell you i don't even know who you are and but also i wanted to get out of that stupid place like that was like a prison to me and this got me out of it and so her hiding her identity during that whole wedding scene was iconic iconic this book is just so good please read it if you love fantasy romance but anyways there you have it those are 10 romance recommendations that i thoroughly enjoyed that have the hidden identity trope please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to i would love to know and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me any emoji that has like a person on it um but yeah thank you all so, so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all wake up today's gonna be a good day Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.